the way war happens and how human rights fall by the wayside, mostly on all sides of the conflict, not at the, to the same extent, but it happens in all war on all sides, is something that really deeply impacted who I am. Um, and I very deeply believe that environmental destruction is something that is part of this war mentality and that um, also contributes and exacerbates war and conflict and human rights violations. So it's actually interesting to note that the International Criminal Tribunal in The Hague, the permanent one um, that now has universal jurisdiction for the whole world, has just two weeks ago announced that they will start prosecuting environmental violations, especially ones that result in displacement of peoples. Um, so in terms of the Peace Valley, uh, we are actually seeing these violations, first of all, on Aboriginal rights, which are not only constitutionally protected in Canada, but also are un protected under the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which Canada also has ratified. Uh, so to push through a project that would actually completely contaminate Aboriginal fisheries that would decimate their hunting grounds, that would flood over 300 sacred and spiritual sites, including rape sites, against the consent of the peoples who live there, who have had a treaty with Canada for over 100 years, is something that is truly an abomination. We're building the dam in the northeast portion of British Columbia. We're building the dam on the Peace River, which is a river that runs from the central west portion of British Columbia into Alberta and then up into the Northwest Territories and flows eventually into the Arctic Ocean. The, the project would be a third dam on the Peace River in British Columbia. Upstream from where we're building the Site C Dam, there's the WAC Bennett Dam, which started generating electricity in 1968. Downstream of the WAC Bannett Dam is a second dam called the Peace Canyon Dam. The water out of Peace Canyon Dam would then flow into the reservoir for the Site C Dam. The dam is about seven kilometers from downtown Fort St. John. It would be an earth-filled dam, approximately 60 meters high from the riverbed, approximately 1,050 meters across. The reservoir behind the Site C Dam would be 83 kilometers in length on average would double to triple the river width and it would hold water for two to three days. Despite the impacts that the project has, because it has impacts, but despite those impacts, they're significantly reduced because you're not having to store water for long term. And yes, it does have effects, but everything you do to create electricity, whether you're using solar, whether you're using wind, whether you're using microhydro or biomass, everything has an impact. The report of the joint review panel was really clear that the proponent, our elected utility BC Hydro, has not proven that there is even a need for the project, that the project would have severe impacts on First Nations use of the land that could not be mitigated. It would have severe impacts on fisheries and wildlife and some rare and endangered species. Uh, so it was very concerning to us and a huge disappointment when both the federal and the provincial governments approved the project in 2014. Especially this year, we have seen a huge outpouring of support for the opposition to the dam, support for the First Nations, rallies and demonstrations across British Columbia. So this year has been really encouraging, while at the same time also hard to actually see the preliminary works and what has already been done to the valley in terms of the logging and the building of the reinforcing of the banks and the destruction that is happening. Uh, the reservoir size is about, uh, impact to land is about 5,550 hectares of land is flooded. Not all of that is agricultural land. Some of that is land on islands. Some of it is gravel bars, but it does impact uh, productive agricultural lands. Uh, the lands that are lost, uh, however, the joint review panel that looked at the project through the environmental assessment process said that the impact to agriculture on a provincial and national level for Canada is not significant. What we propose to the joint review panel is that the loss of those lands can actually be made up in regards to production. 
So we've provided an agricultural fund of approximately $20 million that's available only in the Peace River region to help increase the productivity of lands in the Peace River region to make up for the loss of the productivity that will come by flooding uh, the farmland, some of the farmland in the valley. In terms of displacement, we also have the farmers who are not Aboriginal peoples, but who also have rights. Um, and they are actually looking at having to leave their farms. Some of the houses will be flooded, others it's mostly land. In terms of our ability to feed our people when climate change strikes, we have already seen uh, prices go up. Now a head of broccoli is seven, eight dollars. This will only get worse. The peace farmland is so uniquely productive because of the northern, its northern exposure, because of the huge long daylight that it has from in the summer, from three in the morning until 11 at night. Um, protected from the winds down in the, in the valley by, by the river. Um, very warm and very hot in the summer, that microclimate getting warmer and hotter with climate change, yields are huge. So that's a place that can feed one million people in fruits and vegetables. To flood that for energy we actually don't need is a violation and a crime and a sin against humanity. And it is especially a sin against future generations who will inherit um, climate change in ways that we can not even imagine. We initiated a number of studies to look at what type of effect the Site C dam might create downstream. And, and keeping in mind that the Peace Athabasca Delta, located in Alberta, is 1,100 kilometers away. That study showed that there would not be any, pardon me, that there would not be any significant impacts to the Peace River Delta at all. That uh, minimal impacts that might occur are assenuated as you move downstream. Because what happens is the Site C dam actually will not change the flow, regi flow regime that people presently see or that the Peace Athabasca uh, Delta is encountering. That flow regime stays in place. We're just moving the control point on the river 83 kilometers downstream from the Peace Canyon Dam. The short answer is that there will not be an impact to the Peace Athabasca Delta from the Site C project. The First Nations at the other end of the Peace River have launched a process under UNESCO to protect their World Heritage Site, uh, the Peace Athabasca Delta, which is protected as a wooden Buffalo National Park. So it's both a national park and the World Heritage Site. The biggest freshwater delta in the world, and it's at the confluence of the Peace River into the Arctic Ocean, so quite far from the Peace Valley. But because it's so unique, um, and because of its hydrology and its dependence on flooding from the Peace every spring, um, it is liable to slowly die if this dam goes in. With two dams, you can still release an artificial pulse of water every spring to recharge the delta and all the lakes that are higher elevation that this way receive water. Uh, with this third dam, our science uh, that we have reviewed and the uh, expert testimony that we have heard uh, says that with three dams it will no longer be possible. So it's, it will be the straw that breaks the camel's back in the Peace Athabasca Delta. We're seeing a potential population growth of over a million people in British Columbia in the next 20 years. And that number comes from Statistics Canada. And we're looking at the potential for economic development. So mining, forestry, natural gas resources, and potentially liquid natural gas. All of those things need electricity. It is quite an important political moment for the new Trudeau government who ran on a platform of restoring Canada's reputation and the honor of the crown. Uh, with First Nations, so f to have an international body actually find that Canada is not taking care of a World Heritage Site and that it's now a World Heritage Site in danger, that's not been the finding yet, but it could be a finding and it could be voted in. 
uh, would be quite a shameful reflection on the new Trudeau government. And I'm sure they know uh, what's at stake here. So our hope is that they will take action before it's too late.